What is up everybody? Bill with Honest Open Permaculture Hot Farm. Today we're going to be collecting Japanese praying mantis cocoons, putting them in the garden, telling you why I'm putting them in the garden, and kind of pushing you in a good direction on where to find these, how to find these, what's a good spot to look in. Actually I have a whole bucket of them already that I've been collecting throughout the winter. As I move the pigs, they've been showing me these cocoons everywhere. So I've been collecting them, putting them in the bucket, and now I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with them. So let's take a walk and try to find some more of these Japanese praying mantis cocoons. I know they're Japanese cocoons because I looked them up. Uh, there is a North Carolina uh, praying mantis that's a lot bigger. The Japanese praying mantis is the smaller one of the two. But when you're looking, look at this right here. This is prime real estate. We got some wind going on guys, sorry. This is prime real estate right here for praying mantis cocoons. They really like brush that has a lot of sticks in it. So I'm not seeing any in this area right off the bat. They can really blend in, so it can be hard to find them at, at some times. I didn't see any, but it doesn't mean there's not any there. I just didn't see any. I'm going to keep walking along where there's a little more access up here where the pigs were. Um, this is where I found pretty much this whole bucket was in this area. So I'll bring you to this area and show you if we can find any more. I think we can. I think there's more out here. Nothing over there. There's some tall sticks over here. Let's go. Some tall brush over here. Let's go look at the edges and see if there's any over here. Oh, there's one actually on some thorns. Oh man. All right. Um, cut it off with a knife. If I brought a knife, I didn't bring a knife. I came out here naked. Okay, so how are we gonna get that off without getting stuck? Usually they, uh, they don't put their egg sacs on something that's alive. It's the first one I've really ran across that something was alive they put their egg sac on. It's usually dead things like those. I broke it off. We're good to go. So we usually, we're usually, you see one, you see more. So we're gonna stand here for a second and just kind of scan the brush. Those are some pretty good locations for you to look in to be able to find your own cocoon. Uh, maybe it's just behind a restaurant that you visit. Just kind of peek over into their brush and just scan a little bit, see if you see anything. If you do, you know, snip it off. So this is what they'll look like really up close and personal. So why am I collecting these praying mantis cocoons well they are excellent in the garden to help control pests the type of pest the type of bug that's going to eat your plants the plant you want to eat these guys will hatch out and they will go after those type of bugs just like your ladybugs like you want to have ladybugs in your garden when i find ladybugs out and about i always scoop them up and i put them in the garden area i do the same thing now with the praying mantises now since these are the japanese kind they don't get really big you can see like the north carolina um, praying mantises they get really 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 big and they will snatch up bees like pollinators um, these guys they don't get that big to snatch up pollinators so i don't really mind spreading these out all over the place i haven't found any of the bigger cocoons the north carolina praying mantises so I'm guessing the Japanese have taken over in my area here, which is fine with me. And just so you know, I don't know if the difference between a hatched cocoon and an unhatched cocoon. So all of my found, I did collect. Like, I don't know if the cocoon just dissipates, goes away once they hatch out. 
Do they eat their way out of the cocoon? Not real sure. Haven't found any information on how to tell the difference between a hatched and unhatched cocoon. With that in mind, I'm gonna be putting at least three to four cocoons in each row out here in the market garden. So we're standing in front of right now the garlics and the brassicas and the lettuce that we planted under the row covers yesterday, or the, the other day. We're gonna use these as our natural pet pesticides. These and ladybugs and row covers anything but spraying poison to try to kill the bugs because the poison also kills the good things so if you can watch your plants see when it's coming you can actually brush off the aphids wash off the aphids and help deter some of those bad bugs at the beginning while the while the good bugs are coming in to establish their dominance and balancing out your garden and we're going to help the good bugs along Go ahead and find their food since our food is right here and their food likes to eat our food we're gonna go ahead and put that right where it needs to go let's show you how we're gonna put them in there we're just not gonna go in there and throw them on the ground because um, they could they could get really wet uh, moist soggy start to rot and uh, get all moldy and kill everything inside if something's inside we're gonna pretty much put it back how we found it let me show you what I mean so what we want to do is we want to get all the way down here at ground level. We don't want to get in the trenches where these little plants are going to be doing warfare with the aphids, the black fly, all the stuff that wants to come in and eat and lay eggs on it. Here is our weapon. If you look at the pointy end is the top. That is the bottom. So we're gonna just slightly stick it in the ground, right in these plants right here. So it's sticking up. It's got airflow all around it. It's off the ground, ready to hatch. Start combat. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put one on each end and one in the middle of all of these rows. We definitely want to make sure we put these around the leafy greens, the things that the aphids really like to eat, which are also being protected right now in this row cover. All right, that's 27 praying mantis cocoons in that area. We got a few more spots we should hit up over here where we're gonna put our tomatoes and things like that. Our binding stuff that we're gonna be putting up the trellises starting today, actually. You guys just aren't gonna see that. If you'd like to see a video of me putting up the trellises, I have one. I'll put that up in an iCar dropping in right now and down in the description. We got one more spot, let's go over there. Okay, so the last place I'm gonna put these cocoons is the new garden bed that I haven't shown you yet. Just finished this yesterday and planted it out. So let's go ahead and add some varmint protection or some pest protection with the rest of these cocoons. All right guys, there you go. Now, some of y'all might be thinking, why not just go buy some, some pesticides, some organic pesticides? I'm um, sure, why not? Oh, you could. Um, but as the state of the country and the state of the world as it is right now, um, if something like that were to keep happening, where shelves keep being emptied, um, you're not gonna be able to find pesticides, much less organic pesticides on your shelf. That's not what's gonna be made. People are gonna be worried about making other things like food, and energy and staying alive so you need to know if you plan on growing your own food just know how to keep pests off your plants pests away from your plants not just bug plant pests but like moles and voles and deer 
and raccoons and all, all, the, the whole nine yards. You need to know how to keep them away besides just going out to the store buying something to fix it. There is ways to do it with nature without having to kill nature. Always think what can eat this. That's one way to always think about it. What can eat this? What will eat this? Whatever will eat this, if I can eat it, then why don't I eat it? If I can bring in something that's gonna eat it, bring in something that's gonna eat it. Find you some praying mantises, guys. It's gonna help your garden stay organic. You won't have to spray it. Doing it the natural way. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure you smash that thumbs up. Whichever it is, just down here and subscribe. Catch you on the next one.